Marek Wich. I'm mindfulness instructor and so-called emerging psychotherapist. I'm very much interested in bringing together mindfulness, meditation and other contemplative practice with the psychotherapy. And that is perhaps the reason why, why I signed as a speaker to this uh, Beeville Summit, because um, the topic pain uh, was very, very interesting to me. And so I would like to welcome you here, welcome you in my presentation. My presentation will be about ways how we can deal with the pain, fear and discomfort in the interpersonal relationships. Uh, my presentation is practical. The, the main goal of myself is to provide, show you, suggest uh, several uh, methods and attitudes which, or let's say approaches that you can use in your life. And I am convinced that they can help you to deal with the pain and discomfort better or, or they can help you to deal with it in more smooth or smart way. Uh, before I uh, start telling about these methods, I would like to uh, show you two, two main axioms or we can say two main arguments which I consider as a basis of this presentation. The first argument is that the pain is a natural part of our life. The pain is there. It was there, it is there, and perhaps it will be there, right? Everybody is somehow in pain. Everybody suffers in some way. And uh, I'm not telling you, okay, let's go suffering all the time, anything like that. Uh, I'm not telling you be passive and accept whatever there is. But what I would like to suggest to you is to look at the pain as a very good learning factor in our life, as a good indicator of our limits, as a good indicator of or good tool for knowing our, ourselves, right? If you want to discover life, if you want to discover yourself, if you want to relax in life, it's good to include pain because pain is a part of life as well as fear and other discomfort. So that is my first axiom. The second one, uh, very interesting or very important part of pain in our life are the others, right? So um, how it is with the others? Many times uh, we may perceive the other persons as a cause, as a main cause of our pain or discomfort. Honestly, me in my life, the most challenging things I examined, already there was someone else included. And perhaps the most challenging experience for me all the time happened in the intimate relationships. And many times I'm, I'm just thinking about myself that I'm such a victim, you know, that, oh my God, why have I met this person? Why have I met this partner in, in my work? Why have I met uh, this girl in my life? Uh, yes, we tend to fall into this role of victims so, so, so many times. But the fact is, okay, I'm not telling that I have the universal truth, but there is one really important information uh, which I'm using in my life, and that is the division of the primary and secondary cause of what's happening in our life. Uh, I found inspiration for this division both in psychotherapy and, and in Buddhism actually and uh, I think it's very practical so the thing is that we have a primary and secondary cause of what ha what's happening in our life including the painful things and the other persons are not a primary cause they are just a secondary cause 
What does it mean? It means that the seat of the pain or discomfort or whatever else is already planted there. And this seat, as every, every single seat, just waits under the ground for its opportunity to have a right and proper conditions to just grow up and to show itself. So, and the other pers other people are just like that. They are, a second, they are a secondary cause. They are a condition under which we may discover our hidden seeds. And what does it mean, hidden seeds? It means they are in the subconsciousness. So we live some life, we think something about ourselves, we perceive life in some way. And it's not 100%, right? Do you know yourself fully? If you would know yourself fully, I'm pretty much convinced you would not want to listen to me because I don't know myself fully, you know, I'm just explorer, or we can say student of life. So um, if I do not accept the attitude of the victim, which just and victim which just says, oh my God, why this happened? Oh my God, again, why me, etc. Because victim actually says, this is not mine, yes? This is not mine subject to study. Okay, if this is not yours, why it has happened all the time? Why so many patterns are repeating? Why we have problems with one person and after we, let's say, this person uh, disappears from our life from some way, after a while, after a few years, another person comes and a similar pattern emerges, similar discomfort, similar problem. Why it is that? I would dare to say it is because this is not caused by the person. It is already there. And it's always an invitation. Hey, take a look deep down there. Discover what is there. There is some subject you still did not understood correctly. So there is my second axiom. The other persons, other people are just a context for our our own issues and problems or subjects to just emerge. So pain is there and the other persons provide conditions to uh, learn the deep causes of our pain in life. So uh, these are the two main axioms and I would like to add to it. Uh, there are many ways how we can actually uh, become a better student of life, become a better student of the relationships and uh, they can help us very much. And the first approach which can help us is mindfulness. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is our natural capacity to be aware of what is happening in the present moment. In our life what is, what is our life? Our life is a set of the present moment experiences, one after another. So actually, if we learn to be more mindful, more aware of what is happening in the particular moment, we actually start to live more fully. And what is very essential part of mindfulness is the non-judgmental attitude. Non-judgmental attitude does not mean that we stop discriminating good from bad. Nothing like that. Non-judgmental attitude means that before we name the thing or we just put the thing in a box through which we all the time perceive all our experiences. Let's say we may perceive our experiences from the box of the victim, for example. That means that nothing is my responsibility. It's always somebody else's fault. It may be fault of uh, other people. It may be a fault of 
a weather, it may be a fault of the universe, I don't, I don't know, you name it. So before we do that, we put it in some box, yes, we just wait for a moment. We just wait for a moment and observe the situation as it is. Observe our feelings as they are. So uh, there is non-judgmental attitude. That is that is very important part of mindfulness because this capacity to be mindful is already there. We may say also it is capacity to be, uh, let's say, uh, a relaxed observer of our life experiences. Yes, just observing what is already there observing what is happening in our life, observing what is happening in our relationships. And um, this, uh, this capacity is very essential in order to start to deal with uh, the discomfort and pain in relationships in a better way, because it creates a space for us, a space for us, to actually face both pleasant or unpleasant in a similar way and to be able to breathe and relax in it, right? It's also very important for us to not stick into a classic routine. I've already suggested it. This routine is to perceive everything in our life through our box and this typical box might be a box of this victim with, that does not accept the responsibility for what is happening in our life and uh, this is also related to one really uh, really rooted mechanism which people collectively use and this mechanism, I would say, is actually one of the main root causes of our problems. And that is that we tend to consider everything which is unpleasant as bad and everything which is pleasant as good. And the result of this mechanism actually is that we tend to avoid and resist everything unpleasant and we tend to cling to or be attached to everything which is actually pleasant. And why is this problem? This problem is, the problem in, in this mechanism actually is that we cause ourselves much more suffering and pain than is necessary. So, if I live, if I work in some company and there is one person and I really don't like him, right? So, it's pretty unpleasant to even look at him or to, uh, to talk to this person. Or we, we may have a real issue, so uh, briefly when we are together in really short time we start to argue or shout on each other we don't like we hate each other okay so it is definitely unpleasant but if i start to use this strategy of avoidance or resistance uh, then it causes more problems because uh, as it is said everything which i am resistant to that pervades. It does not, resistance does not solve a problem. It does not solve the problem if I just tell myself, okay, this person is not there. I, I, I screw him up. Okay, he's not living for me. He's not living in my world. Uh, he is nothing. If I tell this to myself, I'm, I, congratulations, you have not solved your problem because he is actually already there. But you just added more resistance, more uh, avoidance to this person. So actually this tension between two of you grows up. Yes, it grows up. Uh, 
and uh, usually it is not about the other person because as I said, remember, I said he's just a secondary cause and these problems with the other person, this resistance to the other person it's not a main problem, it's, it's not a main show the main show is in you because again this person in your office is just a context or mirror, we can say mirror, which shows you hey, take a look take a look at this mirror this mirror just reflects what you do not accept in yourself so perhaps I, I can very well, I can very well remember one, uh, one example from my life which happened uh, it is like four years ago I, I worked in one in one company and there was a manager and this manager was really aggressive so it was every small thing I screwed up he came to me and shouted to me really really loudly and um, thankfully I was quite mindful already at that time so I, I realized one thing when he came to me and started to shout at me there was a resistance yeah so in the first few seconds I was not I was not mindful so I felt in the resistance so it doesn't matter whether I said him something or not it, it what matters is how I felt in that situation so I felt the resistance the thoughts came in my mind okay he is so terrible he's shouting at me he's punching at me all the time and I really suffered in that moment and then there was the spark of mindfulness so I realized okay what is happening right now what is happening he's shouting at me and, and how do I feel in this moment oh I feel I feel like shit actually <laughs> I feel like shit yes I feel like a small boy let's say 13 year boy who's just being shouted by his dad and I realized yes this is how I felt when my dad shouted at me in my life yes so this actually this manager actually helped helped me to to remember to my old suppressed feelings they were suppressed because I resisted the situation when I was younger with my dad when he shouted at me so I, I remembered the situation with my dad and and I, I start to really examine it and I, I examine that I feel a lot of shame uh, I, I, I actually believed my dad when I was younger I believed him that I'm bad that I'm la lazy right that I'm a bad son um, that I do not have a worth and all those things you know I guess you know it somehow as well so I believed him everything because I I perceived my dad as a god in that age or even when I was younger right but it was actually not the truth okay I can admire I was quite lazy when I was younger yes I I mean um, I, I, I spent a lot of time when I was younger just playing computer games and whatever so there was some kind of truth but not entirely because my dad has his issues he was tired from job he had problems I know it much more better today because I, I had some time to examine him right to, exam to examine his condition as well but in that age I believed in everything so I started to believe that I'm worthless that I should be ashamed that I should feel a guilt etc 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 so and this in similar way I start to feel with this manager when she came to me and shouted at me there was a resistance okay no 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 but on the other hand I, I felt ashamed I felt guilt you know I, I felt like really I'm a shit but it was not entirely true the truth is that he had a problems with his nerves that uh, he felt a lot of tension 
And when he came to me, he just released this tension in this way. So uh, the mindfulness actually uh, helped me to, to do a therapy with my dad through this manager. And it actually started to help me to show, uh, it actually started to show me that the way how, how I feel in the situation when he was shouting at me was not so much appropriate. Yes, it was not appropriate because I was not so bad as he shouted at me. Yes, but there was a pattern from my past which actually was ready to feel bad in every particular moment when something like this happened, when some authorian hierarchy, higher guy came to me and started to punch me verbally, right? So uh, <laughs> what actually happened, I. I, I really I really hope this is not so much complicated for you because it, it is not so easy for me to to describe uh, all these uh, mechanisms there. What actually helped to me was to relax. So I started to be more and more aware of those situations and I never enjoyed them, to be honest, really. I, I have not. But I started to be aware every time he came to me, he shouted at me. I told myself, wow, this is interesting. It sucks. It's unpleasant. Yes, I feel terrible. But this is interesting. What's happening there? Why am I feeling so bad? Because rationally, when I was observing it, I knew he has actually a problem. He has a lot of suppressed emotions, yes? But why am, I, why am I feeling so much bad? Why is it that? So I just observe those feelings. And in this observance, I actually learned to relax. It was not such a horror anymore, right? Or, or it was quite a horror. But this horror was actually fun. Do you know it when you're watching the movies, for example, right? You're watching a comedy, it is fun. You're watching a thriller, it is fun, right? You're watching a horror, it is fun. <laughs> so it is the same way with mindfulness. You may just observe it as really in, with really non-judgmental and interesting attitude. So again, I would like to come back with this non-judgmental kind of the way, because there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of discussion in mindfulness community about it. So this non-judgmental attitude does not mean that you stop to discriminate. You just let yourself to look at it outside of your box when it emerges, and then you may actually start to discriminate what's happening. You may start to name what's happening. You may start to name, okay, I'm, I'm feeling really bad. So what is it? So you wait for a second and then you discover, yes, there is a lot of guilt. Hmm. There is a lot of shame. Yes, yes. There is some fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Quite a map, right? You may actually write it sometimes. It's not bad. Yeah. And, and then you may say, why am I feeling so guilty? Or in which situation have I felt so guilty in past? So then you may actually realize that this situation is similar to some other situations in your life. And uh, then you may actually start to discover yourself, the suppressed feelings. Um, because, yes, right now, I might be quite mindful, you might be quite mindful as well. But have you been mindful in when, when you were 10 years old, right? Did you have this capacity to really like discriminate, etc.? Usually not. Usually um, we just fall into this pattern that the pleasant is good, when everything works well it is good, and the unpleasant is bad. 
So we learn to suppress things, we learn to resist, but with this resistance, when we just put, put all those experiences under the ground, under the subconsciousness, uh, etc., when we learn to do this, we actually lose a lot of our energy. We lose ourselves, we, we, we lose our personality, actually. And then we're just walking <clears throat> through our life, we're just walking through our life, <clears throat> and we need to do one really um, demanding and challenging and tiring thing, and that is... We really try to keep it down. We try to keep it down. And um, so if, if we embrace this opportunity to just bring things up again, we may actually regain a lot of energy in our life. A lot of energy. We can feel more fully. We can feel more relaxed. And when we apply mindfulness during the painful situations, it's actually the way of relaxation. It is not like, okay, it will be so nice and relaxing all the time. It is not like that. But it is about when the shit comes, try to remind yourself that this shit might be actually interesting. No matter whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, it might be interesting. And this observance, this, this kind and uh, really curious observance, <clears throat> naturally, spontaneously, helps us to relax in the situation because we are more likely observer of the situation. <clears throat> so that is mindfulness. Really briefly, um, you can find a lot of things about mindfulness. You can use your formal practice. Those are the formal meditations, right? So you may just sit and observe and really feel your body. You may feel your breath. Of course, you may, you may observe how do you feel. You may observe your thoughts as well. This is the formal practice, the formal mindfulness meditations. You may find a lot of them. If you do a formal practice, let's say at home or at work during the break, whatever, uh, it helps you, it increases your capacity to be mindful within the situations, within the interactions, right? Because when you are in in argument with somebody, there's usually not a space, okay, give me a second, I will have a meditation. Hmm, how do I feel? Yeah, <laughs> usually not. So, um, <clears throat> but if you do it at home, you prepare yourself to be more mindful in the situation. It's like the, the capacity to be mindful is something like that in the morning. You do a meditation, it's more. Then it falls down, then you do a meditation, it's more. Yes? There's the first approach, the formal practice. The second approach is the informal practice. And informal practice is actually... Uh, that's the main practice. So you may try to be as mindful, as aware as possible in every particular moment. You just need to remember to be mindful. Okay? That is the way why, why actually mindfulness is sometimes translated as remembrance. So I'm not mindful, I'm spaced out, I'm completely, I, I'm completely living my scenarios. Okay, I'm completely uh, <clears throat> lost in my thoughts, pressing everything through the box. And then the thought comes, or, or some kind of spark of awareness comes, hey, how about your body? Hmm? Okay, I have a body. Hmm. And my body is there. Hmm. And how do I feel now? Oh, the breath there, and yeah, what's happening in my surrounding, and now it comes, you're alive, wow, congratulations, so try to be alive uh, as much as possible, it's like the endless mastery, yeah. sometimes it is easy, sometimes it's not easy, but we may try 
it is one of the ways that can really help us to deal with the pain and of course this is not only a situation when we are physically with the others have you ever experiencing that you are just peacefully washing the dishes at home everything cool yeah and now the thought comes and and you just remember to the argument you had with your colleague or partner two days ago or 20 years ago it actually doesn't matter yes and when you when this thought comes the feelings comes or emotions comes so you actually when this thought comes you imagine the situation you start to talk with this imaginary person yeah you start to argue you start to uh, have a dialogue and as you have a dialogue you started to be pissed out and angry again then you start to be fearful yes then you imagine that perhaps uh next next week you will meet this person again yeah and another sort of fear or discomfort comes and discomfort uh inspires other thoughts and it goes and it goes again and again and again and yes it's quite crazy sometimes <laughs> so in these situations you may again if you remember you may tell yourself mm, what is this wow this is quite interesting mm -hmm. yes this this how did it comes this thought comes and and these feelings came wow how it it interacts and and when you tell yourself okay it was interesting enough now i'd like to come back to washing the dishes we will just wash the dishes and again something comes wow it came again mm -hmm. interesting and now i'm just coming back to this and by doing this you're actually showing one really important thing you're showing yourself that you take responsibility about what is happening in this present moment and you're not taking responsibility in a way oh ugly thoughts get out get out get out oh, get out because if you do this you create resistance it is a similar when you when you meet this uh, unpleasant colleague in your office and you say ah, i don't want to experience it right i don't want it's tension it makes more mess even more mess yes so the thing is to accept it hmm i feel so terrible hmm it's so unpleasant thought mm, yeah you can enjoy the unpleasant that is actually this this message of, of, of mindfulness or maybe not even enjoy you, you may just live the unpleasant in the same way as you live the pleasant um, you may also um, okay I, I, I will show you a little uh, a little bit of a theory of mindfulness in relationships so there is only one mindfulness one capacity be mindful and aware I already uh, told you that uh, one interesting thing is that uh, we may uh, train mindfulness when we are with the other persons with other people and uh, you may do it through development of the three levels of relation mindfulness so the first level of relational mindfulness is mindfulness of self in relationship what does it mean in the practice when you are with other people you may observe what is happening in yourself what is happening in your body is your body relaxed when you are with a particular person or is it not because if it is not if you feel intention right with the other person nervousness it immediately tells you okay there is something going on why am i not relaxed what is happening there and through perception of this body you may realize wow there is actually fear i'm fear of this woman why i'm being with her in the day i'm fear of this potential employer why 
perhaps I want to get my job so much. Perhaps he reminds me uh, my old old employer or whatever. So the first thing we can do when we are with others, we may observe them. We may observe how they actually feel. Uh, what's happening? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we may observe how we actually feel, what is actually happening in ourselves. So when I'm with somebody, I'm afraid of him and I start to be aware of that, I may start to cope with this fear. I may observe it. And if I observe it and accept it, I'm not so much at the mercy of this fear because awareness is a very good tool to actually do something with it. Because we are observer, we have a wider space in which we can operate and we may not react on this fear so much. If you are aware of that, you say, okay, there is fear, but I will not act from this fear so much. The fear is there. It is something like not so much pleasant guide of my journey, right? But it is not my master. It is not in my house. It is not in my, inside of me. That is important thing to know. And that's the way how you can cope much better with the fear or everything unpleasant during this particular situation. So that is the first thing, mindfulness of self in relationship. The second level is mindfulness of other in a relationship. So what we can do is we can be aware of the other person when we are with the person. So, and why it is, why is this important tool for coping with fear and discomfort better in our life or pain in our life? Well, uh, now we sort of come to uh, another very, very good tool, which is kindness and compassion. It's interconnected with mindfulness, yeah? so I will interconnect it. It's not, those are not separated approaches. So if I'm with the person and let's say, I know I'm afraid of him. I, I, do, I do not feel well with this person. And if I, um, well, if I, if I start to focus on this person, focus on what he does with the body, how does this person actually feel? Sometimes it requires training, of course, but if you train this capacity, it's more easier. If I focus or try to at least imagine the perspective of the other person, it can help a lot because um, the kindness or compassion can emerge in this approach. So I'm sitting in front of this boss, I'm so much fear from him, I'm so much stress from him, but now I start to examine his situation. Not just being in myself, I'm examining him. And perhaps I start to feel it. he's quite afraid as well. Or, yeah, he does look like he had some quite really challenging time in his life. He looks tired. He's not smiling so much. So in that in that in that way I can really start to start to see yeah yeah perhaps this person is not so much happy as well and perhaps the way how he acts in such a rude way right now is because yeah he just developed this mechanism of living in the world because he did not find anything else his capacity to be mindful or kind is not so high it must be quite hard life yes we can, all of us can imagine on the face of our life when we also were not so mindful, right? How it was. For me, it was not so nice, actually. Sometimes uh, it is said that ignorance is a bliss. I personally do not agree with that. I think in the oblivion, right? In the ignorance, the suffering is the highest because for me, the worst suffering is 
when I suffer, but I am not aware that I suffer because it's a feeling like something is missing, something is really, something is really bad, but I'm not aware of that. So I really hold this uh, imagination that everything is perfect, etc. But I'm just something like you know. I'm just waiting for my execution, you know, I'm just, I'm just waiting for all this pain to come to me one day, right? And perhaps if I tell it in the extreme, each one of us is just waiting for it. <laughs> but each one of us who is, who at least tries to be mindful and tries to work with it, we, we process it. At at least a bit, you know, we, we do with it at least something, which means that if we feel this, that this old air is coming out, that we are doing something, and, 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 and this is what actually gives me some kind of comfort. It gives me, okay, the school is not ready, perhaps the hardest exams will just come. But at least I'm in the process and I know that I'm not such a bad student. But imagine this man in front of you who does not know that he is a student. It is not so much, it is not so nice position to be in. So in that moment, I, I, I may start to observe that, okay, I, I am in discomfort, but there is something else. There is kindness towards him. There is compassion towards him. Because I feel, okay, this must be really painful, the situation in which he is. And now something really, really interesting happens. Now I see that there is connection. There was not before, and that was so painful. But now here is connection. I feel him, I, at least a bit, I feel this person. And it is unpleasant, it is painful, but not so much anymore, because this separation is, is what is actually the real, real shitty suffering. And when we are suffer, when we are connected somehow, we can stand it. So um, the, this mindfulness of other person, this ability to feel into other person, actually offers us opportunity offers us creates us possibility to develop a kindness and compassion which is the way how, how we can create the bond with the other person and it really doesn't matter whether this person wants to create a bond or he does not want to create this bond because in the end all the primary seeds are just ours and ours own so, uh, if I learn to be compassionate to this guy in front of me, I somehow realize that I'm showing compassion to mirror of myself. So, I'm, I started to be compassionate and kind towards me. So, what has actually happened there is that I am changing thanks to this person in front of me. And there is something real. That is really something real. And when I started to, 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 to talk about the compassion and kindness towards others, I need to add something else. And that is a self-compassion. Sometimes we do, we really, believe me, we really do not need to wait for other people to come to mirror something. Sometimes, we may just invite ourselves to become a real and true friend of ourselves in every particular situation. So the self-compassion is actually another approach when we learn to be a true friend to ourselves. You, you may ask yourself, are you really, really and fully a true best friend of yourself. If I ask myself, the answer is 
I'm more and more, but definitely not all the time. <laughs> definitely not all the time, because sometimes when I really screw up something, I really, and I observe it thanks to mindfulness, I really start to realize that I can be really cruel to myself. Oh, you bastard, you screwed it again. And the thoughts come all day long and in the evening again, you screwed it up. You cannot relax, look at yourself, do something, be worthy. And whatever else, when I did really deep practice of self-compassion, sometimes what was the end message of this criticizing voice in my head was, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> I started to laugh immediately, you know, because there's nothing else what you can do, you know. Indeed, it's funny, but it's funny only when you realize what is there, right? Only when you realize that. Um, <laughs> and, um, and that is one thing. And um, another voice which can emerge when we are not so much a friend of ourselves is this victim. I, I was telling you about it again. Oh, poor me. Why did this happen to me? One day I missed the plane. I missed the plane. Why? Because I was just sitting in my home and hoping that I have a lot of time. I, I had to... I was so slow in preparing my suitcase, whatever. And then I was sitting in the bus, heading towards the airport. And I knew that I will, won't make it. So... So the victim in me emerged and said, oh my God, why this driver of the bus is so slow? Why these people are coming to the bus so slowly? And then I started to observe it and I said, who, who, is, who is to be blamed there? And then I realized it's the universe, right? Yes, because I would like to change the linear time to get it to my airport. So it's, again, complete bullshit, you know. Why do we hate ourselves? Why I am hating myself, actually? Or, or why I would, I'm lying myself that someone else is responsible for my life? I do not have the ambition to uncover the whole mystery there. So I'm just telling, if you start to be mindful, perhaps you will realize that you do it as well. And it's related to the education, to the relationship with parents, and whatever else, a lot of things, yes. But what can we do is that we, we may, when we, when, we, when we are aware of that in that situation, what can we do is that we can start becoming a true friend to ourselves, if this happens. That's the alternative, that's the real alternative. So I might tell myself, hey, okay, you did not do it well, you, you screwed it up, it's all right. But now it happened, yes, it happened. Congratulations, you have another experience. Yes, congratulations, you screwed it up. Now you can learn, now you see your limits. Now you see what is all, again, what is there to, to be learned, because you are a student. And I would like to invite you, really, I would like to invite you to, to examine it as much as possible and not repeat your mistakes. But on the other hand, I truly believe you as a student. I believe you, I support you, I stand behind you, okay? And not say screwed it up. But if you do, I will still stand behind you because I believe you, I like you, I love you. And this is something really else. We are most creative, we are most focused when we feel supported, not the other way. And there is our body as well, because our body is, our body is a level of our existence through which all those tensions come and go. So we may be compassionate and kind to our body as well. We may perhaps, you know, hmm, 
you screw it up and you say, mm, but I love you. I still love you. I still like you. Thank you that you are here with me. And this is something which I would call the inner intimacy. The inner intimacy, which I feel is really important and essential part of the real relational intimacy. But before I go to this inner intimacy, um, I would like to uh, sort of recapitulate, recapitulate to you that I, I've been just talking about mindfulness of self in a relationship. Yes, just be aware of what is happening inside of me when I'm with others. Then I was talking about mindfulness with the other of relationship. That is, I can be aware of what's happening in the other person. This mindfulness of other in relationship actually provides me ability not only examining the other person, but also to develop kindness and compassion to the other person. And through that, to start to be more kind towards myself. Because the person is just a mirror of me. In a similar way, mindful, during the mindfulness of self in a relationship, if I discover that I'm so harsh on myself, or that I feel as a victim, I might be friendly and kind. I, might, I'm, I can sit with the person I have a problem with, and I can really be a friend. It's like sitting there with a friend. Yeah? Someone who really supports you, trusts you. It helps you to deal much more and to stand much more in challenging situations if you have a real friend inside there or there whatever you want um, so those are the two ways which are really deeply interconnected I would like to suggest you to develop develop um, both there is also a third level which is called mindfulness of relationship in relationship so it is me here it is you here but there is also us and this us is something else. It's the higher organism. It's something bigger. It's something which transcends us. It's a new system. If you have a group of people, they look like individuals, right? But from the up, from the up, you see just one dot, and this one dot has a new rules. This one dot has a new qualities. So it is also important to be aware of that. Be aware that there is a third dimension of just relationship. And why am I telling about this? I'm telling about this, that some relationships are always in the flow, always nice. Yes, always nice, always chilling. We may relax in these relationships and they are essential, we need that. But perhaps they do not provide us so much material, they do not provide us so much indicators of um, what we can develop, etc. They are the really unpleasant relationships which show us so much indicators. But if everything would be like that, our life would look like hell, you know. <laughs> so they are important, but sometimes, yeah, they are too much. And there are relationships which are something between, usually it is said. The best intimacy relationship is when there they are both and a little more pleasant. <laughs> so they they are really dynamic, those which are which have something between. And I'm telling you about this because if you start to observe that each every relationship is a being for itself. You may not take the things so much personally. Because with somebody, it is nice under every condition. With somebody, it is quite shit, quite mess. Yes. But it's not your fault. It's not his fault. It just is like it is. And perhaps if you work in it, on it, it may change. It happened in my life many times. That relationship changed. It, it, became, it became better. We find respect. We became friends. 
but also I imagine relationships which are just screwed up. We are not friends and we will not be friends. And it is not my thought. It is not your, uh, your fault. It is just as it is and it is okay. Why not? Something, sometimes just things need to screw up. Some things are just screwed. And I do not say let them be screwed. Let, let the hell burn more and more and more. Not like that. I'm just telling that this acceptance that it is how it is, this letting go of the tension that everything needs to be perfect. I think that is the best platform how to start. This acceptance that the things are just as they are. Um, sometimes it is challenging to process the things in the situations. And sometimes it is not even possible. We just have an argue. And then hour after I came to my mind and I said, oh, what happened? I was so much present in it. I was so much sucked into the situation. Yes, it happens. It's okay. So that's why it is very important and I would like to recommend this to you very, very much. It's important to recapulate. Very good thing is in the evening when you have time before you go to bed, just try to remind yourself the day that just passed try to remind yourself the feelings which happened try to remind yourself whether you've been so much critical on you or, or so much victim and if you do this and look at it from this friendly and more let's say detached situation but familiar situation there is essential thing bringing detachment and familiarity together then you can clear the mess at the end of the day. Not entirely, but you can do a lot of work. It's okay if you do that in the moment. We are not super mindful. Yes, you may do it post and post. You may also do it a lot of things, but it's important to do it every day. Let's say at least three minutes. And what is good to add there is gratefulness. And gratefulness is very very nice thing gratefulness it's about that you just honor whatever happens you are just grateful for what you have usually we have our trash vault in our life okay finishing project finishing workshop finishing school finding a partner divorcing partner whatever else but the life, the real life, is also between, right? So gratefulness actually help us find and to, to, uh, to remind ourselves again that everything is worthy and that there is real wealth in our life, in both pleasant or unpleasant. And if you end the day with recapitulation, recapitulation and gratefulness, then you really might go to sleep quite satisfied, you know. When I do this practice, usually the things which I'm most mostly grateful for are the unpleasant things. And usually this really, really, this, this realization comes in my mind, okay, this person is, was not so excited from you. Nice. You see your limits. You see that life it's not black and white, that there is more, more to light, there is more to learn. And you see that you are alive because that is pain, what is pain about? Pain helps us to be alive. It reminds us that we are alive. It reminds us that we are a human. Yes? Sometimes we may say everything is possible if you want in your life. Mm -hmm. Perhaps yes, but everything is possible when you are a human, I would say, <laughs> because you need to start where you are.
you cannot dream that you are a god or dream that you are a little shit, you are human, you are just something between and uh, accepting the pain which actually is a human condition very much um, is I would say a good reminder of our true condition and um, I would like to end my presentation with with one last thought uh, I would like to invite you to become a lovers of yourself because I I've been very interested in intimacy and, and sexuality and all those stuff and um, more and more I start to realize that the real intimacy only we can only give it to ourselves we cannot expect intimacy from the others primarily we need to start to give it to ourselves to our body to our experiences which we experience so it comes with the self-compassion and self-kindness it comes with it it comes with gratefulness yes when we start to appreciate ourselves when we start to be nice to ourselves even when we feel bad when we start to live and perceive life fully we are actually becoming a lovers of life we really start to love ourselves and we start to feel intimacy towards ourselves and I think that is one of the ultimate goals how to cope with pain is to make a pain the act of love make a fear the act of love because this capacity to accept it non-judgmentally to really perceive it to make it interesting coupled with capacity to really feel the others and really feel myself and really go in it and through it this capacity is actually something which uh, makes every moment a nice act of love and I'm really not telling you that my whole life is the act of love my life is full of painful moments and perhaps in the future I will tell you okay that time <laughs> that time I had a bit of truth but but I so exaggerated but now I would like to tell you that um, suffering can be or or pain 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 can be really really nice if you go towards it in a smart way we cannot take all the pain because too much pain could be something which is beyond our capacity and it could destroy us immediately on the other hand avoidance is not a way and the life is not just purple life is not just uh, a beautiful fairy tale dream so um, that, is, that is perhaps my message to become a, a lovers of life and also a pain <laughs> in, 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 in in smart way of course okay so I think my time is up uh, I, I was not able to cover all all the details and all the aspects and um, I'm convinced that if you look at the videos of my colleagues it will help you to get a fuller picture and uh, and if anything what I just said will enrich this picture of you I'm really grateful for that I'm re really thank you if you watched the whole this video I would really like to thank you very much I'm really grateful um, that this event happened and honestly it was really <laughs> intense for me to to talk about it a lot of things were just happening in my body which I would say is the main indicator for me to say that uh, this b -World Summit is something uh, real important so thank you very much and I hope that we meet in person someday and perhaps uh, share some updates from love and pain of our life
thank you very much and enjoy your life. Thank you.